Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Pompey McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity, The White March. Oh, time is ticking away, ladies and gentlemen. I wish I had another week or so off where I could just focus on this, just absolutely finish it, or another week of the game not being out yet. But, at the same time, I really want to get into the second one and start playing it, so it's one of those eh, situations that I know everybody else has been waiting for eh, just over a month for the game to release from its original announced time. Anyway, welcome to the fishery worker. Uh, perhaps I should wait outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually would agree with you. The fishery is closed for the night. Does that mean there's going to be different people in here at the nighttime as opposed to the daytime? Which is cool. I I'm okay with that. We're going to go to the inn, I guess, next, probably. And we'll deal with whatever's there. And then we will go to whatever other buildings that we need to. We'll, of course, rest during our time in the inn. In the inn. And, yeah, my my goal or my dream here is that by the time we're done with uh, one or two more of these places. Oh, a supplicant has arrived in the Deerford and his village and is seeking a guide. Oh, well, that's fine. Kana, why don't you go and regale him with tales of, I don't know, whatever it is that you regale people with tales of, and get him out of our place so he stops making us look like scribs. We have Teal Been looking everywhere for you. A player named Gus. All right, talk to me, buddy. The man is sweating despite the cold. He opens his mouth to speak, but all that comes out is a loud, hacking cough. He bends forward, bracing his hands on his thighs, while he heaves and gasps. After a lengthy duration, he raises a finger, still panting. All half the wreck's fault. Them fools sent me to the other side of town, looking for you. At last, he stands again. He wipes his dripping brow with the back of his hand, and then offers his hand to you in greeting. Pick your nose and shake his hand. You know, I think I'm coming down with something. I'm probably contagious. Eh, keep that to yourself. He withdraws his hand and coughs again, his cheeks brightening once more. Pleasure to meet you. I'm the, uh, well, the captain of the militia around here. Really? I didn't see you during the ogre attack. See, I was, uh, guarding Gref's rest. Uh, someone had to make sure those ogres didn't burn it down like they did, uh, Katie's house. I am ashamed of that. He frowns and shakes his head solemnly. I wanted to catch you before you went running off into the wilds. Too late! I'm already back! Surprise! See, there's a few dangerous folk you might be on the lookout for. Plus, if you're heading out to Longwatch Falls, I thought you could pick up the thermal pearl for me. He looks away and twists the toe of his boot into the snow. You want me to find a thermal pearl for you? That's the thing. I already found it. I just, I just need someone to, else to go out and get it. Sod and Hot Springs up near Longwatch Falls. Would have grabbed it myself, but that's when I looked around and saw the Lagufeth. Uh, must have been 50 of them. He spread his arms wide. I would have fought, but I started to wonder what the rest of Stalwart would do without me. So I ran, for the sake of the village, of course. What is this pearl, anyway? They form it in the hot springs, something to do with all the minerals in the water. Smell kind of funny, but they are full of minerals. Just had to crumble them into a pint, he grins, and you notice that his gums are bleeding. Uh-huh. They cure scurvy? Like I said, the pearl's in one of them thermal pools near Longwatch Falls. Shouldn't be hard to spot. Tell me more about this place. Well, it's east of Stalwart. I've got some nice views of the valley, but most folk avoid it these days. Plenty of wilder nearby, and it only takes a few inches of snow to block the pass. If you're heading out that way, I'd suggest talking to Thrisk. He might, or however you say his name, Thrish or something. He he's might he's might have something to help you deal with the uh, Lagu Faith. He he might. That's all I needed to know. Stop by his place before you leave town. This is the house next to the mines. 
He's a veteran hunter who knows the wilds better than anyone. Uh, he said something about these uh, dangerous folk. Well, we get our share of crazies out here. Most of them aren't even from the village. He laughs at his own joke. Latest groups I'd heard of were the Gleaming Society and the Sisterhood of the Slacked Skull. Slaked Skull? But Renan Guild uh, set aside some bounty money to see those troublemakers were taken care of. Uh, you bring me the heads of their leaders, I'll give you some payment. Tell me about the Gleaming Society. Crazy pack of radicals who, well, they basically want to topple governments and kill the wealthy. Makes the War of Defiance look like a good, or like a food fight. Duke Avar and the Regent of Rayad Saris both declared them illegal. Which is probably the only thing those two would agree on. Or would have before all the murder and mayhem in Defiance Bay, he frowns, scratching the back of his neck. Anyway, check Longfall, Longwatch Falls to the east. That's where they were last seen. Uh-huh, and who leads the Sisterhood of the Slaked Skulls? That'd be Metzla. Metzla. Now, all of the members of the Sisterhood worship Barath by sending as many folks back to the wheel as they can, he shivers. They've been poking around Durgan's battery, and Wael only knows why. Sorry, Wael only knows why. But you can understand why no one around here was pleased to hear about it. Passed through the town recently, didn't stay long, but they stopped at the Temple of Andra. You might see if Lafta knows something. Well, if you come across them, be careful. They are unpredictable. Um, I thought it was to the west when he was saying it this way. Uh, it's east. No, it is east. Okay. I, I just heard west in my mind. Alright, the Thermal Pearl... Figured you'd be out of here in a flash after the fighting died down. Most people don't stick around after they figure out the ogres are making regular visits. Yeah, we're not most people. I would have helped fight them monsters off, you know. If I didn't think I'd just get in the way. And with you there to handle things, uh, everything turned out well enough, didn't it? Don't see why Havrick's still sour at me. Uh-huh, what's this about Havrick? Oh, Havrick's the innkeeper over at the Grave's Rest. Grave. I... May have been hiding in the inn when the fighting started. The raid didn't <clears throat> improve his disposition any. Uh -huh. Did you know he has a whole case of Fenlin liquor in there? I keep offering to buy it off him, but he says he's saving it up for when the batteries open again. As if we're gonna last that long. <laughs> Anyhow, he said he'd thrash me up and down the mountain if I didn't leave him be. It seems reasonable to want to save it for a special occasion. You hid away while everyone else risked their lives. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what Havrick said, actually. Look, I'm not proud of it, but I'm no warrior. What am I going to do? Throw a net on them? Sure. And now you're worried about some fancy drink. They say a single drop changes your life. You'll never want to have a drink of anything else. Probably that's all rubbish, but it's supposed to be very good. Mm -hmm. It's delusional is what it is. Point of fact... What with you dealing with ogres and everything, maybe you'd, you know, be willing to help me out. Probably not. From saving the town to swiping liquor, uh, there's progress for you. Avrik keeps all the good stock in the inn cellar. Out of sight, you see. I mean, it's bound to be under lock and key, but I'm sure he wouldn't miss a single bottle. Not with everything that's going on. Uh-huh. What does stealing wine for you have to do with fighting ogres? Well... Havrick can be a little intimidating when it comes to his beverages, <laughs> uh, but otherwise, not much, I guess. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not going to rob the innkeeper. Shh, all right, keep it down. I didn't mean anything by it. But if you happen to come across some, then maybe you could share? Maybe. Maybe, buddy. All right, well, we got some bounties. Uh, okay, that's a grief's rest. Renan Guild's house. I suppose we should go there at some point. Alright, well, before we actually go into either one of these places, now that we have other things that we have to do, let's go get these other things taken care of first, and then we'll come back to there. So we gotta go back and talk to Lafta, because of course we do. And then we have other things that we have to do. The door does not appear to be, or appears to be barged, or barred from the inside. It does not budge. Well, that's kind of a problem. Alright, well, let's waddle our way on up over here, I guess. Nothing else to do about it but go in here and kill. No, we're not going to kill. 
guy already had us put down his son. Also, I wanted to... I think we'd reclaim the idol or whatever was taken off the, that altar, so... Probably should well, return that. Have a seat coming to your elders Some questions. Advice, what can I do? Uh, we're talking about him before we go to Longwatch Falls. And good thing you did. Hot Springs north of the road are crawling with Lagu Faith. I'm surprised Tildor found himself out there. The thing to know about Lagu Faith is they're fast. Tell her to cold, too, so try another angle of attack. Okay, so he's res they're resistant to cold attacks. All right. Something seems to occur to him. He pats his pockets, checking his pipe between, or clenching his pipe between his teeth. These will come in handy. Uh, use them if you get into trouble. He hands you a few sealed bottles. The old hunter looks up, or you up and down, puffing on his pipe. Huh. But if I'm being honest, you may not even need them. You handled those ogres well enough, and you look like you'd hold your own against the lagu <laughs> Alright. Well, bye. I mean, it's it's extra info, I guess, about doing the thing that we're going to already do. I'm probably going to return to the place that we were already at before going to do other things. And I guess I'll meet up with the guy that's supposed to dig up his rocks or whatever it is. I don't, I don't know what's happening. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. We have still three or four places left to go. Oh. Guess we just walk through there. Anything over here? More camping supplies that we can't use. Sweet. Alright, well, I know the inn was first up on our list. We're going to go in here instead. I don't even know what this one is. Guess we'll figure it out in a couple seconds. So the goal, the hope, the dream, is to get another level or two out of the White March and then hopefully be further along than we are right now. They gone? Have those nasty brutes finally left? Uh, I'm going to say yes. I heard the ogres outside, tearing down walls and murdering folk. Don't remember how things got this bad. The elderly woman needs her hands. Her knuckles are swollen knobs and her palms are rigid with calluses that scrape and rasp as she rubs them together. But you're the new adventurer. Renan Guild's latest volunteer. She squints at you, leaning precariously forward on her wobbling <laughs> legs. A real spitfire, she told me. Bet you'd whip those layabouts at the mine into shape. Suddenly she cackles. I'd like to ask you Did something. Did you say something, dear? Tell me about yourself. Me? I was the overseer at the mine, back when it was running. Got shut down decades ago when we couldn't sell or ship the stuff. But I still remember plenty about the mining business. And I got as many folk as I can digging out the entrance. She taps her head, a spotted dome under a thinning thatch of hair. Been praying to the salty wench that I don't forget too much before they finish the job. She winks. Well, thanks. Got to speak up? My no. hearing ain't what it was. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. Thank you. Okay, crazy lady. Well that was relatively useless, I guess we could say. With a fair amount of certainty. Uh, so who, well, again, uh, it's it's going to be out by the time you guys watch this video because I won't have this video uploaded before it's out. But who's excited that Pillars of Eternity 2 is out? Or if you guys are able to, like, see into the future or the present or the past or something, who's excited that it's going to come out tomorrow, eh? I, too, am pretty excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm so happy that I'm actually getting through this. I have a real problem finishing games they like destroyed this. destroyed the stockade, mother. It's... I don't know why. I don't know if it's I enjoy playing them, and because I enjoy playing them, I don't want them to end. I know there are certain games and books and things like that that I've read or, you know, what have you, that I just don't want it to end. So I never go and try to finish up like the main storyline, or I, you know, I like oh the book's so good I don't want it to end, and I just put it down and I go and I read something else, keeping that hope and that dream alive. Especially if it's like a multi-part book, because then okay, well the next part's gonna come out. And then you finish it up closer to that. Anyway, I think it has something to do with that. Also, there's a lot there. And in my current job here doing the, the YouTube's stuff, it's uh, there's a lot of things to cover, a lot of things to play. And sometimes you just can't dedicate as much time, energy, or effort to a single title as you may want. That being said, things kind of can go by the wayside a little bit. All right, they destroyed the stockade. Mother, it's... Enough. They're gone. 
She holds up a hand which is missing the final joint of the ring finger. Oh. But it's her voice, sharp and steely, that silences the young man. As he glowers at his toes, she turns to you with dark circles under her eyes and a smile pulled taut across her thin lips. The deliverer of Cadnua. Thank you for making the journey. Abida knows it's a long one. Okay. <sighs> well, I'm sure you wagered on a more civilized welcome. Still, we're much obliged for your capable intervention. She shoots the young man a brief but stern glare. He pulls a knife from his belt and an apple from his pocket and sets to work. There's a job that needs doing. That's what I'm here for. It's an honor to be called here. Charming place like this? Can't imagine why you don't see more visitors. That was no trouble. I'm here to help however I can. Then perhaps Four. you can help us find something. She folds the page in her hand with a quick and merciless pinch. Stalwart isn't much more than a grease stain on a map. What roads we've got in the White March are basically tracks in the snow. And for every traitor or adventurer that comes through, three of our own leave for good. Well, that's not great. But it weren't always so. There was a time when kings and queens sent their firstborn to these mountains, when the White March was the envy of empires. Uh huh. Her eyes shine, and for an instant, she looks like a much younger woman. How the mighty have fallen. What an era that must have been for the White March. The Pargrin Dwarves transformed the White March once. We could bring some of that greatness back to Stalwart. But we need the White Forge. She raises the map and taps a spot in the middle of a white, gray expanse. Um, never heard of it. Of course. Been over 200 years since anyone's felt so much as a summery breeze near it. She smooths the creased map. I'm hoping you can do something about that. She ignores the young man who shakes his head at the cracking, uh, the crackling logs. Me? Work a forge? I've never done anything like that. I'm not asking you to work the White Forge. I want you to find it. Oh, calm down, lady. Take that, drop that bass out of your voice. We've been trying to breach Durgan's battery for over a year now. Problem is, the other expeditions can't so much as dent the front door. Nice. She rubs her fatigued, shadowed eyes. Tell me about these other expeditions. A dozen different groups have come through at our request, and several more besides. Been hoping that one of them could clear the way through Durgan's battery. Uh huh. But young or old, green or seasoned, it don't seem to matter. They cast their spells, chisel at the door, and search the grounds until they've worn new treads into the old stone. Uh. The lucky ones eventually go home. Plenty more find themselves on the wrong side of a blizzard. Or an ogre raiding party. Eh, ogre raiding parties are underwhelming. Well, why the sudden interest? We're an old mining town. Or we were until the Adirans pulled out and left us with a half-dug mine shaft and something resembling an inn. She thumps the sturdy wooden wall with her fist. Since then, it's been a steady decline. You've seen the roads. Isn't much we can produce that the Valians can't ship cheaper. Fair enough. But the White Forge. Well, if we could fire it up again and start producing Durgan steel or something close to it, it wouldn't matter if we're in the White March or the Living Lands. Business would come. She folds her arms and gives you a stiff nod. The young man says nothing, but he tosses a sliver of the apple peel into the fireplace. And that's why you need my help. That's the long and short of it. We're laborers and fisher folk, not adventurers. She nods. But Durgan Steel could put Stalwart on the map again. Open up the mines. Bring in new business. We just need the White Forge. She thumps her desk with her fist. Why is uh, Durgan Steel so special? Because you can shave stone with it. Cleave cast iron in two. Wow. And the stuff's as rare as it is remarkable. In her enthusiasm, Renegild shifts on the balls of her feet. She props one bent arm on the other, pointing distractedly toward the eaves of the house. If you had a suit of armor made out of that, I bet people would get tired of trying to stab you after a while and just give up. <laughs> if we could make something even half as good, we'd have a market at our doorstep and work enough for all of Stalwart. For a split second, her gaze flickers to Uldric. How's it no one's gotten into Durgan's battery yet? <laughs> Where should I start? Ogres, blizzards, or sheer damned inaccessibility? She ticks the items off with her fingers. It ain't for lack of trying, I'll tell you that much. Got untold riches in Durgan steel lying just inside, and never mind the White Forge itself. Mm -hmm. The Adirans who first settled Stalwart tried to crack it. So did the Valians, and every other cocky adventurer with more metal than sense. She folds her arm, shaking her head at a pitted floorboard. But the place has a funny way of sealing itself up. 
Front door stays shut. The tower entrances are clogged with rubble. And it's been impossible to blast a way in. Renegade trails off, and for a moment, the room is silent, but for the popping and cracking of the fire. Well, what happened to it? It don't bear dwelling on. There's too many superstitions about that place as it is. Uh huh. She waves her mangled hand in a broad crescent, averting her gaze. Killed each other off, or so the old books say. He glare. He glares at Renegild through hooded eyes. Plenty of tales to go around, but none of them open the battery. She scowls. And the at last him. thing people need is another reason to fear the place. Whatever it was, the other Pargrin dwarven settlements in the White March, Bone Picker, the Hawk, and the rest, emptied out not long after, moved to gentler, greener lands. Had the right idea, if you ask me. No, well, I don't see why you need the White Forge to make good steel. Finally, someone talking sense. He raises his knife and half-peeled apple to the fire in a dramatic gesture of exasperation. Virgin steel wasn't just good. It was some of the best. We need the best if we're going to keep Stalwart alive. She glares at Ulderich even while she speaks no to you. No one alive today has seen the White Forge, but the old stories tell that it was powerful. Glowed white hot and gave off a steady, even heat, unlike any other furnace. Let better schooled folk puzzle over how the thing was built. I just want to see it put to use. She waves a hand. Well, tell me about the Pargrin dwarves. Pargrin's a word in their language. Means traveler. Interesting. They've been wanderers for generations, but I couldn't tell you much more. All right. Uh, any idea where I should begin? The battery's up the mountain to the north. A good hike away. She jerks her head in the direction of the slope behind the house. Near Galvino's place, huh? Aldrich says it in a breezy tone, but Renegild falls suddenly silent, consternation hardening the lines of her face. He smiles and draws his knife across the apple again. So it is. Though I was going to suggest dealing with that ogre camp before anything. Okay, who's Galvino? Uh, she compresses her thin lips into a frown. Mestre Galvino, as the old crosspatch prefers it. Lives by himself and keeps the wilder and beasts at bay through sheer foulness of his temper. Uh, she rolls her eyes. She means to say he's a skilled smith and animancer, who's lived in the shadow of Durgan's battery for over a decade. He looks over his shoulder at you and Renegild. I'd say that's worth mentioning. Sagani folds her arm. And he butters Z his bread on both sides and fits his left shoe before his right. But that's neither here nor there. She crosses her arms and crumples the page in one tightening fist. Seems odd that he lives out in the wilderness by himself. Not doing much worse than any of us. Aldrich speaks to you, but his eyes are fixed on Renegild's, uh, Renegild in sullen mischief. Huh. He wore out his welcome in Stalwart. He's better off with ogres and Lagufoth as his neighbors now. Lagufoth, okay. Her laughter is quick. It is a quick, angry bark. What happened to Galvino? Old lunatic finally went too far. And we sent word to the Valian Academies. Uh -huh. I don't like speaking on it, but if you want to get his guff, just remind him that we gave him the boot. Uh -huh. Ain't nobody here fond of the man, but he's a clever hand and a quick study. It's a fool who thinks he stayed so close to the battery without figuring something about it. That's fair. You said as much to the last party, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of him since. Maybe they didn't run afoul of Baragon's ogres after all. She raises a gray eyebrow at him. Wildrick shrugs and turns back to Just the fire. Just watch your step. Galvino's place is a ways east of the battery, and folk who pass it bring unsettling tales. She shakes her head. All right, tell me about this ogre Belongs camp. Belongs to flames that whisper. Matron Baragon's clan. Hunters tell me they've been active of late. I already took care of it. Hunting elk and otherwise minding their own damn business. He pops an apple wedge into his mouth and chews it aggressively. Minding their own business. Never mind the latest expedition's disappearance, or the broken stockade. She pinches the bridge of her nose, squinting. I'm saying we shouldn't agitate him further. He makes to toss another slice of peel into the fire, but he fumbles and drops his knife. He bends to pick it up, cursing. Yeah, I've already dealt with Bear again. She's agreed to leave you in peace. Well, I hope she proves more peaceable to you than she did to the last group. She sucks her teeth. She folds her arms, rocking back on Mayhap her heels. Mayhap you didn't hear, but the previous expedition crossed paths with her. Haven't seen him since. And I don't miss him none. Smelled like trouble. You did right in parlaying with Matron Baragon, and that's that. He gives you a stiff nod while Renegild fumes. Got it. Good. Before you leave town, stop by the Grave's Rest. Most visitors to Stalwart spend some time there, so Hafric and his patrons may be able to give you the lay of the land. Fair enough. Don't know about you, but I'm parched all of a sudden. Actually, I want to ask you something, or ask you about something. 
What's on your mind? Well, I have a question about... I just want to see what this... The Pargrin Dwarves guarded it. What's okay. on your mind? Uh, can you tell me about the last expedition that went to Durgan's Battery? They didn't volunteer much, and I knew better than to ask. She scratches her jaw frowning. I've seen all types charging through here. Professional companies with shiny new equipment as brazen as you please. And hopeless runs with nothing but tattered leathers. Nice. But these folk, I don't know what they were after. And the way they looked at you made you feel cold all over. She shakes her head as if dislodging a bad dream. Wish I could tell you more. Me too. Perhaps we'll find more in the battery itself, yes? He nods at you with a guarded look. What's on your mind? I know more about Stalwart. Adir founded us back in their colonial days to supply ore to the Empire. Saw a fair bit of traffic from both sides of the White March then. She rubs the nub of her shortened ring But after finger. the Deerwood claimed independence, Defiance Bay found cheaper places to get ore. Didn't have much reason to maintain our supply routes. Isn't Stalwart part of the Deerwood? Officially. Though with the state the roads are in, you wouldn't guess it. Tell me some of the more important places around Here town. Here in the center? Let's see. The Grave's Rest is next door. Hafric can set you up with a room and a hot meal there. Good. The fishery's just on the edge of the lake, and the Temple of Andra is next to it. No one keeps a secret like Lavda. Or so I'm told. Yeah. A few folk live in this part of town, too. Seemed a lot safer before the ogres broke through the western gate. Thirsch lives next to the old mine shaft. Fierce. And Tana, the old mine overseer, is next door to me. She jerks her thumb toward the wall. And what do you do here? I'm the mayor. Oh. Or so I'm reminded every time there's a game shortage, ogre attack, or a neighborly dispute. I'm a builder by trade, though. Traveled all over Air Glonfoth and the Deerwood in my younger days, but ended up back here anyway. She gives you a vague smile that's gone as quickly as it appears. Let's talk about something What's on else. your mind? Farewell. Okay, well that was a tremendous amount of stuff. Let's go talk to Uldric, and I know I'm about out of time you for the right episode. You did right in parlaying with Baragon. Don't know that anyone else here is going to see it that way, but I thought you should know. He gives you a thoughtful nod before turning back to the fire. Do you know anything about Durgan's it's battery? It's a fool's hope. A fantasy that's kept these parts inhabited longer than they should be. He glances around the old house and its worn furnishings. They say the Pargrunan dwarves developed Durgan's steel, became powerful rich, and then one day, they locked their doors and died. He shrugs, turning his palms toward you. Nothing like a mystery to stir folk up. Most of Stalwart is convinced that some Pargrin secret will save us all. But that don't stop him from whispering a prayer when they pass the old fortress. A sour smirk crosses his lips. Something else you need? Earlier you said I should make peace with the About the, the only matron. thing folk here haven't tried. Killing one more matron won't change things for long. He shakes his head. Besides, her clan's flames that whisper. The one that attacked us was Wolf with many mouths. I'd know him anywhere. Fair enough. They're cut from the same cloth, Aldric. Only a matter of time before Baragon marches through that gap in our walls. At the sound of Renegild's voice, Uldric's shoulders stiffen. His jaw works in a silent but furious retort. You seem to dis the only thing Oops. folk here haven't decided. They're cut from uh, the same You seem cloth, to disagree Aldric. with Renegild on Mother's quite a few matters. convinced that a magic forge will turn this frozen crack into a hub of civilization. She can't accept this place is dying. He shrugs. This is your home. You can't just give up on it. Give up on what? There's nothing here. He scrapes the sole of his boot on the straight but weathered floorboards. Well, what do you do here? I'm a carpenter. Mother's a builder. So it felt like a good fit at the time. He presses his lips into a wry frown. Not that we've got a lot of new folk to build houses and furnishings for. These days, I spend most of my time fixing up the stockade. Yeah, farewell. Well, I guess that's that's okay. All right, next episode, we actually do go into the inn, and that should be the last building that we need to do. Then we're going to head back west to Fleetwood Mac. I don't know, whatever the place was called over there in the west. And, yeah, we'll deal with all the stuff we can do there. I believe there's a bounty around there somewhere. And the dude that left that, yeah, and stuff. And if it's daylight when we come back out of the inn, which it probably will be, we'll go check out the fishery before we leave town so that's the plan moving forward anyway i must go as i must try to quickly eat and then i unfortunately did agree to stream i may still cancel it guys and gals if that is the case and it's a monday on uh, the weekend where i didn't stream all weekend i apologize to you all but i'm trying to get some stuff done so you'll have to forgive me but i'll be back to the regularly scheduled programming next week either way 
All right, folks, until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. Later.